Here we go guys, the sense of the OP-1. There are 12 cents in the OP-1. Cluster. Digital. Dimension. DNA. Dr. Wave. Desynth. And if you hit the drum button, it's called D-Box. FM. Phase. Pulse. Sampler. String. Voltage. To get to the synth engines and their presets, you hit the synth button, and then you hit shift and one of these eight presets and you can see a list of the synthesizers on the left and the presets that go with it on the right. To save a synth preset you just hold down on one of these preset buttons and it says saving, saved. The synth engines have some features that are common to all of them such as that by hitting these numbers under the display, hit one, you see the main page and animation of synth. And at the top of this one, you see four bits of information that correspond to the colors of the four encoders. Shift one gives you a list of the synths, but without their presets. So I always use shift and then one of the preset numbers and it gives you the presets. Two in all of the sense is the volume envelope. And if you want to use up your single LFO, you can make it also a filter envelope. Holding down shift while you're in two is where you'll find play mode, where it can be poly, mono, legato, unison. You can set the portamento, bend range, and volume. Three is the effect page. It also toggles on and off the effect. Shift three lets you choose the type of effect. Let's run through the effects real quick and we'll get to hear these as we're making the TB303 patch. So there is CWO, a pitch shifting delay. Delay, kind of a standard delay. Grid, which is a three-dimensional feedback plate. Mother, a reverb that has a possible gate if you want to use it. Nitro, a dual resonant filter where you can use a low pass and high pass filter. Phone, a hacked telephone system where you have, could use the baud raid and things like that that you used to do with the, uh, the old modems. Punch, a low pass filter. And spring, a spring reverb. Four is the LFO and also toggles on and off the LFO. Shift 4 allows you to choose the LFO. Let's look at the LFO types really quick. You have element, and that uses external elements or the envelope for modulating a sound. So for the sources, you have sum, the envelope, the microphone, and G forces from the force sensor inside the OP-1. You have the MIDI LFO, which will allow you to receive external MIDI control change, CC messages from other hardware, or from the computer's music software. And the MIDI CC becomes the LFO. Random LFO, which modulates all the parameters for a selected destination. Tremolo LFO, where you can modulate the pitch and the volume to create tremolo effects. Value LFO, which is kind of your conventional LFO, where you modulate one single parameter value. And Velocity LFO, which you can use with an external keyboard that has velocity to get more expression out of the instruments. And we can use all those features to create a type of TB sound. 
So we see the parameters at the top corresponding to the encoders by color. So first of all, got some kind of bell patch in there. I can choose the square wave. That would be good for the TB. The gold one is stereo, so we can narrow that down to make it more mono for a TB sound. The gray one is filter. Set that to around 900 and turn the resonance all the way up. Before setting the envelope up, let's go down here to the LFO. We can use the envelope to control the filter. So make your source envelope. Let's put this on eight for now. That's the amount it will control it. And then set your destination to well, the sine wave symbol. And then put your parameter on cutoff. Now the envelope is, in addition to controlling the volume, is also controlling the cutoff. Let's uh, toggle the effect off for now. Let's get a lower octave. And go into hold down shift and put that in monophonic, like the TB. Turn portamento to about 67. Release, I'll turn that way down. And I'll give it a little more of that filter attack. And now we can adjust the amount that the envelope is controlling the filter to get that kind of wild uh, TB resonance. And the cool thing is I've heard in AFX recordings uh, sometimes that there's a negative envelope on the TB filter. And you can get that with this because the envelope goes negative. Also made a Kiny Industries type of SH-101 patch. Earlier I talked about features that are common to the synth and we went through the effects uh, really quickly but now let's now that we've got a patch developed here let's take a look at the different effects so with CWO we can adjust the frequency delay Feedback and sideband. To delay, we can adjust the range. Speed. Feedback. And the input level. Grid. Shift gives you a fine adjustment on it. This ends up sounding more like a, a delay. Of course, mother the huge reverb. Can do distance, gate, change the the uh, color of it. It's kind of like the EQ. Darker, higher frequencies. Nitro, the low pass filter, high pass. And uh, the joystick is 
The joystick's a little bit like uh, adding saturation to it, seems like. Phone is like special effects. Just tone. GSM. Baud rate. Telemetry. Punch. Add, add bass. You can hear kind of a artificial low frequency being produced. In the spring reverb, you can adjust the tone. Real metallic. The number of turns. The damping. And the mix. So let's go through synth by synth and just take a look at them. Taking a look at Cluster, let's listen to some of its presets. Was able to make a pretty nice Blade Runner patch. Building Brass. Waves changes the number of waves that are going to be in the Super Saw. And Wave Envelope changes the filtering. Spread changes the detune. And unit, Unitor seems like a random LFO applied to it. Now digital, it looks like some Tinker Toys joined together. Let's listen to a few of its presets. Now it does a kind of ring mod sounding thing, so I was able to make a cool steel drum with it. So you have the wave shaper. Gives us progressive waves uh, up to noise. The octave. The detune. Ring mod. And the digitalness, which is kind of a bit crusher effect on the end. DNA adds CPU ID noise synthesis, meaning it's a noise synth based on the uh, internal processor of the OP. So every, every synth can sound slightly different. So let's listen to some of its presets.
blue is the filter. Gold seems to do an octave type of thing. Gray is taking away the tonality of it and going with more of just like a noise thing. And orange is adding a ton of noise to it. This is Dr. Wave. It's supposed to be frequency domain synthesis. Let's listen to some of its presets. novel presets there. We can change the wave of it. Some square waves up here. Filter. Phase. And chorus. Desynth as crossfade. Oscillator 1. And crossfade between them, I guess. Envelope. Then it has shift functions to go down to the bottom row. This one's based on Casio's phase distortion synthesis, I think, but only with the sine wave. I think there were more types of waves with Casio. Change the filter. Amplitude. Time. Mod. Sampler. You've got a start point and adjusting the loop point and the end point on the orange. So you can play, load a sample in and play it chromatically. And of course have all the advantages of the envelope and LFO. 
and the effects on it. If you hold shift down, you can see you can change the direction of play. You can tune it. You can do a crossfade there and a loop so that you, if you had a pad sound or something, it would be never ending. And you can crossfade. And then you have a overall volume there. So with Sampler, I made this cool uh, sound that you hear a lot in the music of Lone. All right, let's take a look at string, some of the presets here. And it seems to have some internal effect that you can use here. Kind of sounds like a room uh, reverb type of thing. Then you have tension. It's like a sustain thing. Then you have the stereo width of it. This has an FO, LFO on it right now. Let's turn that off. Go back. Now we can adjust it manually. Cheap piano I made. Cheap piano. And I put a little LFO to the cutoff. Kind of gives it that crinkled tape sound. Can bring a second note in. And then tune that second note. Well, this is probably a good place to wrap it up. I could go on for hours exploring these little synths and making sounds that I really wasn't thinking about, even discovering new features on here. And I hope some other manufacturers will enter this space. I could see a, a Roland MC-101 uh, getting with 1010 Music uh, in their little blue box and making a device that would have all the tracks and connectivity of the blue box. The strong synths of the MC-101 and most importantly, MIDI in and out. See you next time.